Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Rudy Page, and this is a, another of our series of a poem from my life, thoughts, and observations. And I'm really pleased, as part of our opening session, we have our good friend, Phil. Phil, how's it going? Right, Rudy. Nice to nice to be here, my brother. Excellent, excellent. So, Phil, let's get straight into into your uh, poems, life experiences, observations. Mm -hmm. First of all, tell us a bit about your family background. Just a bit, right? <laughs> well, my father was uh, Greek Cypriot. My mother's English, French with Scottish descent. So it's a bit of a I'm a bit of a walking meze, as I've always said. And uh, yeah, I have two brothers and four sisters. Okay, 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 excellent. So why did you decide to write this series of poems? Well, it's always been an idea and it was just coming into contact with Gertrude Schott, really, because uh, we, we had this discussion about, you know, that I'd like to do that. And she said, well, I know a publisher. Um, and it really came from there, really. I've got some foxes out there. Can you hear them? <laughs> okay. So right it, really, it, really came, it really came from, from Gertrude Schott, really. And then I had the good fortune of um, meeting up with Nadine, who did the illustrations, who's a wonderful girl and wonderfully talented. So it all, it all came together like that really but it's really through meeting Gertrude Schott and uh, she was very encouraging and you know but I, it's something I'd always wanted to do but it was how I mean I'd worked in music publishing for a long time but it's a different world right and hopefully we will hear, hear from Gertrude a bit later mm -hmm. on I'll invite her just to say a few words oh Gertrude <laughs> <laughs> so Bill please explain the title red inside the red inside the blue, the blue. Mm. and what well, made you write it and the 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 navigating the world aspect. well okay two points there i mean red inside the blue is my way of on the surface of describing colored blindness of which i suffer from but also on a deeper level it's about sort of uh life's dyslexia if you know what i mean being kind of detached um, it comes through sort of having mental health issues. Um, I would suggest, well, I know it does. <laughs> and as far as navigating, I mean, that was uh, an extension of the forward written by Gertrude, I have to say that. And it was her interpretation, I think, of what she read. And when I saw that, I thought, well, I, I, you know, I just couldn't really describe it any better. And um, I think if you're detached and yeah. suffer with certain things going on then it's difficult mm -hmm. because being in, in the detached mode is one thing that uh, borderline personality disorder people suffer with mm -hmm. it's one of the modes mm -hmm. and uh, that's what that really is but, it's, but initially it came from being colorblind okay okay so what we're going to do through this dialogue we're going to feature mm. two of the poems from red inside the blue mm. so would you like to read to us um, with you again? With you again, yeah, why not? With you again. I will be with you again when the lights have faded and our eyes have been opened. Where the birds no longer sing sorrowful songs, but new songs of joy and peace in a beautiful harmony. I will see you again and be able to look at you in a way I never have before. Our minds will be freed from the poisonous empty concepts of this world. We will be free to love as we should love, without any conditions. I will hold you again and never let a distance come between us. We will talk without words and transcend all we have ever known and be apart no more. Excellent. So, so what were your thoughts behind this particular poem? 
this well it's about obviously it's about loss but it's also about the wonderful hope of the resurrection mm. and this is what this piece is really about and i could think of two scriptures or i could think of john 11 where jesus said that i and the resurrection and the life yeah. and i could also think of the beautiful words at uh, revelation 21 verse 3 and 4 mm -hmm. which really says that you know the tent of god will be with man or he will wipe out everyone's tears no no pain no more suffering and death will be no more and the former things have passed away and so whenever i you know i've lost quite a few people in the last five years and three in particular i was very close to and um I've shown this to other people who have lost people. Mm -hmm. um, and before I got this into the book, I actually sent it out under a different name to people, under the name of Andrew English. So I'd get a much more objective and, you know, and it was all, it all came back very positive and um, a few people have picked up on that, but that's really with my thoughts behind it. It's about the wonderful resurrection hope, which I believe is personally is a guarantee. Yeah, yeah. I you can also feel the sense of belonging in there as well. Yeah, and, and living the life that we should have, we were meant to live, which is not the life we're meant to live. The creator never made us, created us to be unhappy and live in a world so full of violence and trouble. I don't believe that. So that's what that's about with you again, that wonderful hope that everyone can have, right? Yeah. We live in hope. We yeah, live in hope. that's it. That's it, the living hope. Yeah, yeah. So... I'd like to um, hear another one from you, another poem called The Clown. The Clown. If you could, if you could Oh, read. I'm a clown. <laughs> <laughs> the Clown. Um, he's just a man with many faces. He's young and he's old and he's dressed like a rainbow. But you will never hear him sigh. When the curtain falls and the show is over, no, you will never see him cry because behind the clown is a man you'll never see. Very good, very good. And again, your thoughts behind the that. Thoughts behind that. Well, mm. I, I think of really Robin Williams. Um, to me, was one of the greatest geniuses of comedy and of our time. And I remember, go, like, if I'm old enough to remember Mork and Mindy, and I just, he was like a hurricane that came through my life. And I couldn't believe this guy. But there was also this real sort of profound sadness I felt to him, you, you know, and he was a serious actor as well. Yeah. But having said that by extension, I think we all have to be a clown, do we not, in this life? You know, we all have to play a role sometimes and smile when we're feeling really unhappy and you know get you dragged down but robin williams really and tony hancock you know yeah. people who suffered with melancholia and which i can really relate to and so uh yeah i always think of robin williams about it. that's yeah. the client for me okay. he was the he was the target yeah I, okay i understand actually yeah. I, I just thought as you're saying um what which is your favourite poem? It's, it's hard. I mean, I, I would I would go sort of my, the painter and the poet, but I also very much like uh, waiting by the gate. So um, let, let's hear that. Like, one. Let's hear waiting that. by the gate. Oh, waiting by the gate. Um, yeah. Okay, waiting by the gate. I will wait by the gate and that's where I'll stay. I won't let go of the pictures in my mind. Those times of love, those times of joy, when daddy came home from a far off land. The peacemakers never make peace. The truth tellers only speak lies. They use our souls for their own end games, games that we always seem to lose. Those demons in their suits and ties, always speaking a different language. Their mouths are full of dark contempt for the people down below. For the soldiers torn on the battlefields, for the children who were left behind. For the mothers and the fathers and the families lost in an empty world. Who will never see their loved ones again and all they have left is a memory. For the sons and the daughters who wait by the gate 
who will never see their daddies come home. Wow. So is, is there a specific story behind that one? Well, yeah, the, the terrible sadness of man-made wars, but I, mm. I saw um, uh, a clip on a YouTube thing where there's this, this mother and her daughter were waiting by the gate in an airport mm -hmm. for the father who'd been serving overseas in the American army and the joy of them running together, you know? But then I thought, well, what about the other side when you don't see the father come home? How must that feel? Mm -hmm. It devastates the child, it devastates the family and for what, you know, for what? Mm -hmm. And it's, so it's looking at the other side, you know, obviously it's a very joyous side mm -hmm. when, when the reunion happens. Yeah, it's beautiful, but it's also a very, very tragically sad side. And that's really what, what Waiting by the Gate's about. Right, yeah, so I can see the heartfelt emotion behind each of yeah. those three yeah. poems. I think what we'll do, we'll bring Gertrude in. Yes, Gertrude. And say a few words. And Ooh. particularly given uh, Gertrude, you know, made the contribution Do you, do you mind if I sit off camera? Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. No problem. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really grateful to say a few words simply because I let me begin by congratulating Phil for publishing Red Inside the Blue. And I, I would also thank him for trusting me and for taking my encouragement on board. But that was just a wee bit of what happened. Phil is a fantastic poet. I mean, he writes from deep within, as you, have, you might have noticed. Mm -hmm. And in looking at his work, I recognize that here was someone who has so much to offer. He needs to get it out there. So, that, so I decided to encourage him, but he already had the groundwork laid. He's such a very, very good poet. And right as we are speaking, he's waiting to publish maybe two or three other books because he, he kept writing. And I must commend him for that. So I, I think this is quite good, you know, and I'm happy that he has finally decided to, to publish. And I know that when readers look at the poems, especially those readers who could identify with things that he has said, there would be, it's a book for them to look at and for people to really see how different lives experiences affect different people and not only how it affects them but also how they can deal with similar problems if they do have things like those so i think this is a wonderful book it, it, it's full of gems and for people of all ages actually and i can see school children especially benefiting from the figurative language that he has used throughout because there's different types of the language that he used throughout, you know, these are what children are being taught at school in to teach them how to write and so on. So they can look at Facebook to get some very, very good examples. So I must congratulate him. Well done for doing such a lovely publication. Thank you. Thank you for that. So Phil, is there anything that you'd like to say to Gertrude after that? Well, she knows how I feel about her. She, <laughs> my spiritual sister, she's a wonderful woman. And, you know, this would not have happened without Gertrude. You know, this Gertrude has been the pin to it all, really. And as I said, Nadine has been a, a wonderful part of it also, because I didn't just want to write. I wanted it to be expressed in pictures, if you like, you know. Yeah. And um, it's a team effort. Right, right. So the book is available through KAD Publications and um, the best way for those people who are interested would be to either go to their website, kadpublications.co.uk or you can send an email to info at kadpublications.co.uk. And uh, so we'll make sure it's up on, the, on all the websites. 
this recording will be up on the websites as well on Fresh FM Radio London website and also this dialogue will be rebroadcast on Fresh FM Radio in London over the coming weeks. So, Phil, I'd like to thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Rudy. It's been it really, fun. really good, my brother. Thanks. No problem. Gertrude and your other guests who are on as well, thank you very much for participating and for supporting Phil in this endeavour. So thank you all and good night. Good night, Rudy. Thank you. Thanks.